Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be looking at the new expansion or content uh, update for Master of Magic from Muha Games and Slytherin. It is called Through the Mirror and it adds four new wizards, a new faction, some new traits and heroes and, and other things. Uh, to the uh, to this game, which is a 4x strategy fantasy game. So I did do uh, previous videos on this game. If you're not familiar, if you uh, aren't familiar, I would suggest going back and checking those, because the focus of this is going to be on the new content, which will be released on March 9th, and it is uh, it is free. This is a free update. So really uh, looking forward to checking this stuff out. So we. It is called Through the Mirror, and if you're not familiar, there are two realms in Master of Magic, Arcanus and Mirror, and this one focuses more on the uh, mirror side of things. So let's, uh, let's activate this, and we'll hit New Game, and we'll pick our... Uh, I'm just going to... I'm not actually going to play. I'm just going to kind of walk through some of, the, some of the new stuff, look at the new wizards, um, and then talk about some of and the goblins and talk about some of that stuff. Uh, I may do a playthrough, updated playthrough, with the new stuff maybe later later this week, um, right around release date or maybe shortly thereafter. Only because this is still in beta and maybe some changes happen, and I'd like to have you know before I actually go into gameplay, I'd like to make sure that I'm using uh, the latest and the greatest, so to speak. So I'm going to hit continue here. All right, so basically, previously to this, or previous to the update, there were 14 wizards in the game, right? Merlin and Raven, etc. right? All of these down to Holly were in the base game, or are in the base game. These, are, these four here are new. So we have Ross, Bianca, Talakka, and Korax, and I may not have pronounced those the right way, uh, so forgive me for that. But um, so let's take a look at these uh, these new these new uh, wizards that are part of the uh, the new update. So Ross, he's a draconian. Okay, so he's a he's a handsome fellow here. Uh, he's a powerful draconian wizard. Filled with rage and turmoil that can be channeled into conquest with deadly precision. He is a master of chaos and death magic. And a fantastic warlord, warlord whose summons are of great power. He refuses to parade in humanoid clothes. And he abhors his supposed twin, Sisra. It is said that Ra's true origin is steeped in malice. That he is in fact a dark reflection of Sisra come to life. So... Yes, there are two draconian wizards. Here's Sistra right here. And essentially they are supposedly twins, right? So they have backstories. And you can see that so they share actually the, um, the chaos magic. So here's Sistra. Um, Sistra and his draconian kin are native to Mirror, right? But he... So Sisra is more, he has, he, he not only has um, chaos spellbooks, he has life spellbooks. So he's a, essentially, if you want to talk good and evil, so to speak, he would be on the good side because he has life magic, which is, you know, about healing and resurrection. Whereas his twin brother here is pretty much the opposite. They both have chaos, but Ross here would be on the evil side of the, of the ledger and he would you know, because he practices death magic. So, as I mentioned, he he looks he looks like a like a nasty character here. So, if you're into playing the bad boy, this would be a good a good option. So he's the first of the new four new wizards here. We'll move over to Bianca. Bianca rose to the highest ranks of dwarven nobility through her steadfast, unyielding determination and unchallenged mastery of rune magic. As stonemason, Bianca also shows her almost unnatural affinity to stone. Native to Mirror, the great wizard seeks to prove her birthright as the master by wielding three separate magic schools, sorcery, chaos, and nature. So she, she has three different schools. 
which is nice because you get some variety, but it's also the, the I guess, the, you know, you could consider some of that being a negative because you're not going to be as strong. Uh, the more, the more you're focused on one, you get kind of some bonuses from being focused on one. And we'll see that with, with some of these other new wizards. But uh, Bianca, as you, as you see, is a dwarf. And so, the, you know, the dwarves are a race that, was in, that is in the base game. They are a mirror side race. And um, she is the first wizard in the game from that, from that way, uh, race, rather. She's a rune keeper. So among other things that were added, you know, we, we do have obviously new wizards that we're talking about right now. There's also a new faction. We'll see that in a moment. There's also some new traits and heroes and, you know, some uh, even some new uh, monsters and spells and so on. So there's a lot of new things in the game uh, that this is it being added, for, you know, basically for free, which is nice from Muha Games and uh, Slytherin. So moving on, uh, she is she's Mirren, right? So you can read about what that, you know, what that means. And then she's a stonemason. So the art of stonemasonry allows the wizard's capital and all newly built settlements to begin with a stone wall. In addition, units of the wizard's starting race have the engineer skill, which allows them to build roads. So that's that's a you know, that's a nice skill to have. And then she's a rune master. So enchanted runes carved by the wizard allow for the power of all the spell magic type spells to be doubled. So that's nice because that's a useful um, that is a useful spell for countering the uh, the magic of your opponent, your opponent, your opposing rather wizards. In addition, this trait reduces the spell research time and casting cost of arcane spells by twenty five percent. So the wizard requires at least two spell books in each of the five different rounds. Okay, so uh, moving on, you can see that's you know she does have three different uh, schools there. Now, as far as uh, Wrath, we didn't talk about the Fantastic Warlord, which is just mastery of the Fantastic Troops, which allows the wizard to increase basically all the attack and defense of all summoned creatures under their control by one. So. Um, He's he's good at uh, basically improving the combat abilities of his of his minions, so to speak. So let's move on to Talakta. Talakta. Um, Talakta mastered the arts of nature magic as a mere babe and grew to become one of the greatest druids of her dark lands. Talakta's mastery of the less benign face of the circle of life has drawn her to mirror where nature's malice can be tamed and controlled. She is also a powerful nature summoner making nature summons 50% cheaper and beginning her journey with a unit of war bears. So she is a goblin. This is the, uh, amount, this, she is a member of the new race that's been added to the game. So the goblins and the goblins are small, but, uh, they are, as we'll see in a short while, kind of a hardy and, uh, prosperous or, uh, what's the right word for it? Um, they grow fast. Their population grows fast. So, um, trying to keep it somewhat G-rated, but uh, yeah, you get you get the drift, I'm sure. Uh, so yeah, so she's Mirren as well. You know, this is through the mirror. So these are basically all Mirren side, mirror side wizards that are being added, and the goblin race is a Mirren race as well. Nature summoner, you know, we see here she has eight nature spell books. So if, if you see that, if you see here, it says every spell book above the seventh adds 5% to the research points invested into deciphering the spells of that domain. And it also reduces their ca casting cost by 5%. So as I mentioned, you know, a few minutes ago, when you, when you, you know, focus and specialize on one school of magic and you get that eighth book, it gives you additional power in that school. So that's useful. So you have to kind of decide, do you want to balance your, you know, do you want to have a, a, a well-rounded repertoire, so to speak, of spells by having several schools? Or do you want to kind of focus on one thing and be able to really be a dominant wizard in that school? So one of the things to consider, um, the Nature Summoner, this allows the, uh, the, this wizard to begin the game with a unit of war bears. 
and they have some uncommon and common nature summoning spells and all nature summons are 50 percent cheaper so that's good when you bring in a a um a unit via magic by summoning it has a cost and then it has a cost every turn that that unit is still uh active so this by making it cheaper you can actually in effect i would assume double you know double your summoning production so to speak for the same cost so that's a useful skill to have so our fourth and final wizard here is korax white feather so korax as you can see is like a bird man korax white feather used to walk the path of darkness and crime in his youth but he claims to have been inspired by his enlightened father to change his fate he thus literally changed his feathers and claimed life as his domain. Korak seeks to bring wisdom, wisdom, bring his wisdom to darkened places by force if they refuse. He commands life magic, and as the life bringer, he can resurrect his fallen and give them healing skills. So he's also mirror side, and the mirror side is kind of the realm of like uh, villains, essentially. It's the dark side, uh, and Korax is from there. But he's kind of seen the the light of um, you know the good the good path so to speak, and so he is uh, he is a life wizard. He specializes in life. He's got eight life books here, as you can see. So that gives him just like uh, just like Talatka is specialized in nature. Korax is specialized in life, and so he has a little bit extra ability there, five percent. Bonus research points and the casting cost a negative five percent. He's also Mirin, so as I mentioned, he started on the dark side and now is still on the dark side as far as where he exists, but he is uh he is a good wizard, essentially. And he's the life bringer. So the mastery of life allows the wizard to begin the game with the powerful resurrected heal spells. In addition, all starting race units under the wizard's control gain the healing skill. That's pretty good to have. You go into combat, you take some you take a little bit of a beating, you can recover faster with the healing skill. You can also use he can also use his resurrect spell to bring units back that are killed. Those are, you know, that's extremely useful in this game. So these are our new wizards. Uh let's just go with uh let's go with Korax for the moment. Though all this stuff is, you know, the same as it is in the base game. So here we come to our uh, races, right? So you select your races, you have your Arcanian races and your mirror races. Where before we had five on the mirror side, we now have six. The goblins are the new race. They are small green humanoids with great affinity to nature and beast mastery. Some may describe them as primitive and indeed goblins favor tribal structures and natural habitats rather than civilizational advancements. They have a particular affinity to the fauna of the land that are known for beast taming and druidic magic. They have a very fast growth rate. So the, as I mentioned earlier, their base rate of growth is 20 plus 20 people per turn, which is really good if you want to grow your cities quickly. They cannot build sages, guilds, shipyards, or parthenons. They have a minus one armor and the earth. They have the earth walker skill for basic units, except constructs. Their settler units cost 1.5 production. And their racial, racial units are boar riders, druids, and beast masters. And one thing you can see here is they have a plus three on the production. So it's used for constructed construct, construction of buildings and training of units. So that's higher than normal. Two is pretty much normal. So they are an interesting faction to play. And we'll, uh, you know, so... At this point, I will I would begin my game, and as I said, I'm not going to do a playthrough right now because I feel like it would be more useful to keep this one short, let you see what these guys look like, so to speak, in the setup of the game, and then do a playthrough video at a later time once the beta is done or close to done, and you can get a better feel for how to play how how these guys play. So I'm going to going to do a playthrough later this week, probably. Um, either right at or right after launch to let you see this stuff in effect um, so that if you don't have the game, you can pick it up. If you have the game that, and I'm looking at this, you can see, you know, this is what's going to be added. Uh, also, maybe you don't have the game and you look at this to see some of the new stuff 
as well, you know, as well as what was in the game beforehand. But I, as I mentioned, I would watch my previous videos on this game if you want to see the base game and how it plays, because I did do a playthrough video. So for now, I'm going to wrap this up. I will mention some of the other things that were added as well. So they they get um, you do get some new heroes. You get uh, yeah, you get here you get new heroes. You get uh, new skills and new monsters and and some new spells as well. So that stuff I'll focus on a little bit more in the in the playthrough. For now, this is mainly focused on looking at the wizards and the goblin race. So for now, I'm going to wrap it up. As always, my name's Joe. This is Hexton Counter. Please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. If you would, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, even if you don't, thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, you taking time to, uh, to check out my stuff. And hopefully you'll come back and watch more. But even if not, uh, it's my hope that you got something out of the video. Regardless. And as always... Happy gaming.